I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Announcement by the President of the United States and the Obama administration of normalization of relationships with Cuba. That word is not articulate. There are a lot of details here. However, immediately, Alan Gross, an American citizen who has been held in Cuba without justice for a great deal of time, defying all possible negotiations, in fact, essentially brutalizing Alan Gross. He is now back in the United States, and this in, in itself is a celebration. Mary Anastasia O'Grady of the Wall Street Journal, who, who writes the America's column, she's the America's editor, is here to comment on this development and what we can look forward to in future. But in particular about Alan Gross, I mentioned that uh, Mr. Menendez, Senator Robert Menendez, a Cuban-American origin who is also a Democrat of New Jersey and a significant voice in foreign relations, he has been the chair of the Foreign Relations Committee, he has said about the Alan Gross return, this is, quote, a swap of convicted spies. There are Cuban spies, one accuses, accused of trying to commit murder, going back to Cuba in exchange for Mr. Gross. This is a swap of convicted spies for an innocent American. Mr. Menendez goes on to say that this vindicated the brutal behavior of the Cuban government, this exchange. Mary, a very good evening to you. Alan Gross is home, and that's good news for Alan Gross. We congratulate him and everybody who worked in his favor, especially your column, Mary, because you have often mentioned Mr. Gross and the injustice of that. But that is not the centerpiece here. This is after decades of no relationship between Washington and Cuba. Uh, in the reporting all day, it's been emphasized that the U.S. alone was maintaining these sanctions. However, if I read very carefully the news from Mr. Menendez and then Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida and other statements. This begins a story of normalizing relationships. Nothing is fixed. Good evening to you, Mary. Good evening, John. Yeah, you're right about that, uh, for sure, that this is only the beginning of what President Obama hopes is going to be closer relations uh, with the military dictatorship in Havana. Uh, but he is going to have to face uh, a Republican-controlled legislature that is not in favor of what he's doing. And uh, to start with, um, you know, the president and Cuba, the Cubans, were very clever in framing the release of Mr. Gross as a humanitarian action and putting the exchange of the spies together with the return of a Cuban that had helped the U.S. Uh, he's, he's referred to as a um, U.S. Intelligent, uh, intelligence asset. Uh, he was a Cuban, and he, he helped give information to the U.S. that helped uh, uh, capture Ana Belen Montes, who was the highest-ranking Cuban spy that ever got into the defense intelligence uh, agency in Washington. Uh, and he also, this, this Cuban, helped uh, provide information that um, put these, uh, these spies that were traded for him actually in, in jail. Um, so he was brought back. And so in that sense, it, President Obama can say that this was a prisoner exchange and put Alan Gross off to the side. But certainly the pressure came to return the spies came from the hostage-taking, and I do think it was a hostage-taking, of Alan Gross in December of 2009. The concern here, though, looking forward, Mary, is this begins a conversation between Washington and Havana that really never ended because there have been many ways uh, that to pass information back and forth. It's what immediately is going to happen. As I understand it, for example... The tourism ban has not been lifted. How will that look for the American people, especially those looking to visit their relatives from Florida or other parts of the United States back to Cuba? Well, people of relatives in Cuba can already go. In fact, there are now direct flights. Um, but widespread tourism, that will not change for now. Uh, what does change is that the uh, licensing for what they call academic exchanges and cultural exchanges um, becomes more streamlined, simpler to do. And, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of people that go to Cuba now because of these uh, 
you know, so-called exchanges. And um, so that will become easier. The, the people, who, you know, in terms of filing the paperwork and everything, the regulations will be streamlined. So probably that will help uh, increase the amount of travel that goes to Cuba. But the actual, you know, spring break in Cuba, we're not there yet. Also, uh, ambassadorships. Uh, already, uh, Senator Rubio has mentioned that he's going to challenge the idea of putting an American ambassador into Cuba, even possibly an American mission. Mr. Rubio is in the majority in the new Congre- in the new Senate, and so that's significant. What about Cuba sending ambassadors to Washington? What do we know about that? Well, I mean, those uh, those credentials have to be accepted here also, and I think that's also going to be a problem um, for the Cubans. I mean, the, the thing is that the Cubans already have the intersection in Washington, and they have an enormous... Uh, Person uh, staff here in in the U in New York at the United Nations, um, and you know they're famous here at the United Nations for acting as spies and and going around and trying to um, you know influence basically uh, powerful people in New York. Uh, so you know the fact that they're going to add another building. I mean, it was sort of replaced the intersection. So I I don't think that that's um, such a big deal. The the, what's big about it is that it's a significant policy change, um, which uh, I think uh, really gives legitimacy to a regime that doesn't deserve it. And, um, you know, people say, well, we talked to China, we talked to Vietnam. But in both of those places, and particularly in China, you know, they've been letting people own things and run businesses and so forth for at least two decades now. Um, in Cuba, you still can't even really run a business. They claim that they're doing this kind of economic reforms, but they're extremely limited. And um, the people remain very poor because of the way they manipulate the currency. This change of relationship between Washington and Havana, it leaves out some large questions you've raised in your columns over the years, Mary. We've spoken especially of the women in white, which represent, if I recall correctly, the brutality of the Castro regime, ongoing brutality towards its own people and people who have reached out for help to the United States and to Europe. Do we know about their fate? Will that be part of the debate as we go forward? Well, part of the exchange was that the government released 53 political prisoners. These are Cubans, and um, some of them were at the request of the U.S. I'm not sure if those people will be allowed to stay in Cuba or they'll be exiled. You know, the Cuban government, in in an effort to enhance its image in the world, has from time to time uh, let prisoners political prisoners go, but normally they send them into exile, and, you know, they end up having very difficult lives. There was a group, the famous group of 75 that were rounded up in March of 2003, were largely exiled to Spain, and I was in Spain um, some years later and, uh, you know, found people who were really desperately poor. They couldn't work. They couldn't get the paperwork they needed. Spain had not... Um, because it was under a very left-wing government, had not given them asylum status. So uh, it, it, their lives were super difficult, and they were far away from their families. So it's one thing to say that they're letting them go. It's another thing to say that they're actually giving them liberty in their own country. And uh, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. But that's one one step. I don't find that so important because next week they could arrest another 53, uh, which is what they do. I mean, they continually arrest people because they have to maintain this kind of fear that people have that if they, you know, if they speak up too much, they're going to go into the uh, gulag and into the dungeon. And um, uh, so it, I don't think there's anything to suggest that they're going to be changing their human rights pol- policy or their, their policy towards civil liberties at all. And, um, you know, that's that's something that President Obama is kind of, if you take him at his word, is kind of just hoping for. Um, and I think it's a, a lot to hope for, given the interests of the military dictatorship. Mary Anastasia O'Grady, the America's editor at the Wall Street Journal. Alan Gross, uh, an innocent victim, is home. That's the good news. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show.